Police are still considering him armed and dangerous. We went to the courthouse and we found these arrest warrants. 19 year old Paul Harper was shot around 11 last night. I can hear we hear gunshots. This is live right now. You can hear that on TV. Now, as you can see, these houses are just a total loss. Breaking news tonight. Jesse Matthew Jr. The man charged with abduction with the intent to defile in the disappearance of UVA student Hannah Graham has just landed in the Commonwealth from Texas. We are closely following this winter storm. Would you pay 17,000% interest on a loan? Well, you might be. Let's say I'm in a situation where Officer Welsh has to put me in the back seat of his car. The rear view camera lets him keep a record of what I'm doing so he can protect himself and protect the person who's in the back seat. He said that will hurt his client's chance of having a jury that can remain unbiased. Luckily for Carol, she was able to bring her friends and family into this storm shelter. We've heard several reports that these save lives. Many people say no body, no conviction. And what would you say to those people now? Ananda, I understand you were there for that big moment when police have been waiting for. What can you tell us? These emails between the Roanoke City Manager and City Council say it all. They had no idea that Advance Auto Parts was going to tell its employees here in Roanoke that they either had to move to Raleigh or lose their jobs. Today we're very pleased that this is a corporate support center. When this news was breaking about Advance Auto Parts restructuring and adding 600 jobs in Raleigh, we found out the news was also breaking to city leaders here in Roanoke. We used the Freedom of Information Act to request copies of emails sent between the city manager and city council to get a more candid response to this news. On June 19th, the day after the company went public with its plan, city manager Chris Morrill wrote an email to the mayor and city council saying, quote, on the advance auto announcement, we were taken by surprise. The mayor, Wayne Bowers, and I met with George Sherman, the president, a couple months ago. He told us everything was going well. Roanoke was great for the company and never mentioned this possible restructuring. We sat down with Morrill, who admitted to being taken off guard, but says the bottom line is Advance maintains a strong presence here in Roanoke. So you're saying even though you were shot, there's been no um, issues in the, the relationship with Advance? No, no, and I think it, it's very clear that if there's you know something that we need their assistance on or if they need ours, that we still have very strong lines of communication. But it wasn't just a surprise. The emails questioned whether Roanoke was even considered for the new jobs. When we asked advanced spokesperson Tammy Finley back in June, she said she believed advanced looked at both Raleigh and Roanoke, and consultants reviewed state and local incentives in both locations. Wayne Bowers, the Roanoke Economic Development Director, wrote back to the council in an email saying, quote, to my knowledge, the consultant never contacted anyone with BEDP or the city of Roanoke. This fact may confirm the rumor that this was an exact executive preference and not strictly a financial decision. Morrill says this isn't the first time the city has lost big company prospects because of better incentives in other states. Jill Harrington says she knows this pain all too well. Hearing the news of UVA student Hannah Graham's disappearance on Monday, Harrington can't help but think of her own daughter Morgan, a Virginia Tech student who went missing near UVA's campus and then three months later in 2009 was found murdered. Every new class of first year students at University of Virginia don't know the previous, um, the cultural history there and the um, high incidence of um, assaults against young women there. Harrington says the circumstances surrounding the UVA softball player vanishing has jarring similarities to her daughter's case. Here's what we found. Charlottesville police have searched these areas between Rugby Road and Grady Avenue and also here near McGrady's Pub in Charlottesville for Hannah. And Morgan's Pantera shirt from the night she was murdered was found right here in the middle of both areas. There's now at least 13 women in the last five years in Virginia who have gone missing or been murdered. Jill Harrington has this photo of all the women who are missing and murdered within a few hours in our area. She also has this map. She says there are too many names and this violence against women needs to stop. It seems like there's a cluster phenomena of um, missing and um, murdered women in that area. An unsettling trend Kenny Geralds is working to stop, helping Harrington and her husband run the organization, help save the next girl. Anytime um, something in that particular area, uh, it, it automatically sends up a red flag to me. 
um, I saw some similarities in uh, Hannah and Morgan. We are all praying that Hannah comes back and she's found safe. But Katie, there's so many things going on down in that area, like Jill said, that I don't believe in coincidence anymore. I just don't. A coincidence both Daryl's and Harrington believe is unlikely, but hopes to be a different outcome for 18-year-old Hannah Graham than the one they had for 20-year-old Morgan Harrington. Tonight we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five or six, and this would this is a, a Tuesday night. So. Restaurant manager B. Heatherland Kirby is about to start her nightly routine of taking these trash bins to the new trash compactor in downtown Roanoke. I joined her rolling the cans to get the full experience. We wanted to give you an idea of what it's like to make this trip. Now, Kirby works at Metro. That's over here on Campbell Avenue. She's got to walk about four blocks just to get to the trash compactor, which is right here. And I can tell you from experience, it's not easy. A risk restaurant owners say will leave them liable, possibly increasing insurance rates when employees dressed for food service are doing garbage duty. I've taken pepper spray with me because of how many comments I've gotten just walking down the street from intoxicated people because you have to walk through all the bars. When we finally made it to the trash compactor, we had to wait about 15 minutes to dump our trash. We talked to employees from about six different restaurants, all with similar complaints, including Christina Parks, the general manager of Subway. So it's very time consuming and not only am I having to pay extra for labor and productivity, I'm having to waste at least 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Extra time, extra money, and something Park says is a little dangerous. She shows this broken glass on the ground and points out there's no security sensor on the compactor, so the door closes about every 20 seconds. But not everyone waiting to dump trash was upset. The executive chef of Table 50 says the compactor accomplishes the goal of getting unsightly trash off the streets. It's been great for us. Um, we're obviously close to it, which kind of makes a big difference for us, but uh, it's awesome. We get to take our trash when we want to. But for many of these employees, the benefits simply don't outweigh the hassle. So here's what I did. I took a list of these complaints to Roanoke City Manager. Many of them he said he was hearing for the very first time. That's Chris Morrill. And he said he had absolutely no problem working with the restaurant owners to make sure this is a better situation for everyone involved. A murder investigation is underway in Danville. Police say 19-year-old Paul Harper was shot around 11 last night in front of Woodside Village Apartment Complex. Harper was taken to the hospital where he later died. WSLS 10's Rachel Lucas brings us the latest facts in this investigation. Tomorrow marks four years since missing Orange County teen Samantha Clark disappeared. State police dive team searched Green Acres Lake yesterday for the 19-year-old. As we've reported, Randy Taylor, the man convicted of the murder and abduction of 17-year-old Alexis Murphy, was also a person of interest in Clark's case. South African Paralympian Oscar Pistorius was found guilty today of culpable homicide in the shooting death of his then-girlfriend Riva Steenkamp. Yesterday, a judge cleared Pistorius of premeditated murder charges. A sentencing hearing will take place next month. Pistorius could get anything from a suspended sentence and a fine to a maximum of 15 years in prison. An attorney for the father accused of killing his five children says his client is being held in isolation on suicide watch and needs a mental health evaluation as soon as possible. Timothy Jones Jr. has been treated for mental health issues before and waived his right to appear in court today. Jones allegedly wrapped the bodies of five of his kids in separate trash bags and drove around for days before dumping them on a hilltop in Alabama. Trending now in pop culture news, the medical director of the New York facility where Joan Rivers went into cardiac arrest during a routine procedure is no longer at the clinic. A funny moment as the president and first lady took part in a 9-11 charity event at a D.C. area school. One of the students admitted she was slightly surprised it was the president and not Beyonce who showed up. Take a listen. 